Now that we have defined our map view and projected our original digital elevation model to the UTM zone 12N projected coordinate system, we are ready to derive some new base map products. The learning objectives in this video are one, to create multiple hillshade base maps with different illumination angles. Two, we will learn how to use the swipe function to quickly compare between data sets. Three, we'll learn how to make an elevation colorized hillshade. For input raster, we want to use our projected digital elevation model or DEM. For the output raster, we want to rename the file as something more meaningful to our project. I will assign a prefix of SP to all my new data products to keep my project clean and consistent. You can play around with the illumination and shadow production by adjusting azimuth, the direction by which the light travels, and altitude, the angle at which the light hits the DEM. When geologic mapping, it is good practice to make multiple hillshades with different illumination angles, which we will do here. The default standard is always set to 31545. When creating multiple hillshades, it is good practice to include the illumination angles in the output raster name. Note how the default save location is in the SP Tutorial Geo database. We want to keep this and just alter the file name. So let's name the first hillshade SP Hillshade 31545. Z factor should always be 1 and you shouldn't have to change it so as long as your map view and your DEM are in the same projected coordinate system. If ever your hillshade turns out blocky, pixelated, or otherwise unsightly, it is likely that your map view and DEM are using different coordinate systems that have different horizontal and vertical units. This is especially problematic if your DEM uses angular units of measurements, like latitude and longitude, and your map uses linear units such as meters or feet. This is a common problem encountered by GIS users, which stresses the importance of deciding on a suitable projected coordinate system and resampling your DEM into that projected coordinate system before doing anything else. As a test and as good practice before running the Hillshade tool, check the Environments tab at the top and specify that the output coordinate system is the same as the map, in this case, NAD 83 UTM Zone 12N. Now click Run. The first Hillshade looks good, but now let's experiment with different illumination angles. Notice this prominent north-south trending linear feature on the map. I know from visiting the site and from literature that this linear feature is a small Graben structure with two bounding normal faults. If we want to emphasize a north-south oriented linear feature such as these faults, we can create additional hillshades that will cast greater shadows on the structure by orienting the light 90 degrees perpendicular to that feature. Navigate back to the Hillshade Spatial Analyst tool. Let's first experiment with illuminating these faults from the west, meaning that our input azimuth should be 270 degrees. Let's also reduce the altitude to 40 degrees. Remember to keep the naming scheme consistent every time you generate a new data product. This one we will call SP Hillshade 27040. Also, remember to check the Environments tab to make sure that the output coordinate system is specified as our UTM Zone 12N PCS. By toggling between our two hillshades in the contents pane, we can see that the angle of illumination in a hillshade plays a strong role in emphasizing geologic structures, which is why it is critical to experiment with multiple hillshades. Navigate once more to the Hillshade Spatial Analyst tool. For the last hillshade, let's change the azimuth to 90 degrees, meaning that the light will travel from the east. Let's also reduce the altitude to 30 degrees. Lowering the altitude results in stronger shadows being cast on the hillshade. Remember to keep the naming scheme consistent every time you generate a new data product. 
This one we'll call Hillshade 9030. Remembering again to check the Environments tab to make sure that the Output Coordinate System is specified as our UTM Zone 12N PCS. By illuminating from the east, we see strong shadows on the western flanks of the volcanic vents and lava flow. The eastern flanks of the volcanic vents, lava flow, and fault are well illuminated, which is why they appear more white. Note that by decreasing our illumination angle, the hillshade as a whole becomes darker because more shadows are being cast. Now I will introduce you to the swipe tool, which is a convenient way to view two datasets simultaneously. Right now, the 9030 hillshade raster is above the 27040 hillshade raster in my contents pane drawing order. If I wanted to compare between these two datasets quickly, I highlight the uppermost 9030 hillshade, then click on the raster layer tab up at the top. From there, I select the swipe function. Now, when I click and drag on the map screen, it will reveal the hillshade raster that is underneath. If you ever want to compare between two datasets with the swipe tool, just make sure that the two datasets are immediately atop each other in the drawing order within your contents pane. Note how each raster layer in the contents pane has a checkbox beside the name. You can quickly toggle datasets on and off by checking and unchecking these boxes. You can also adjust the drawing order in your contents pane by dragging up or down the different layers. Another useful data set is a elevation colorized hillshade. So this is when we drape a semi-transparent colorized digital elevation model over top of a hillshade. To make this, first we have to create a group layer by right-clicking on Map in the Contents pane, then selecting New Group Layer. Double-clicking the New Group Layer will bring up its properties. Here, we can name it Colorized Hillshade. Next, we click and drag both the DEM and the hillshade rasters into the colorized hillshade group layer. Make sure that the DEM is above the hillshade in the drawing order. We must now adjust the symbology for the DEM. A shortcut for opening the symbology pane is to double click on the color ramp that appears under the DEM in the table of contents. Alternatively, you can right click the DEM in the contents pane, then click symbology. Typically, a green to red color ramp is good for visualizing elevation, wherein darker green represents lower elevations and red denotes high elevations. Yellow oranges would be moderate. Next, we must increase the transparency of the overlying DEM so that we can see the topography from the underlying hillshade. Make sure that the DEM layer is selected in the contents pane, then click on the raster layer tab at the top of the ribbon. Here we will set the DEM to have 75% transparency. You can play around with the transparency of the overlying DEM until you find something that best helps you visualize your mapping area. Colorized hillshades are visually pleasing, but it should be noted that the added elevation color can sometimes bias our geologic mapping. Note how quickly the contents pane can get cluttered when dealing with multiple datasets. This is why I will continually stress the importance of good naming schemes and maintaining file organization. Before we move on to slope and aspect maps, let's make another group layer that will house all our hillshade maps. Right-click Map, select New Group Layer, double-click the New Group Layer to rename it Hillshades. Then drag and drop all of the hillshades into the group folder and disable the symbology drop-down arrows. Personally, I like to always have an unaltered version of my DEM in my contents pane. Since we altered the color and transparency of our original DEM, and now that it's hidden in one of the hillshade group layers, 
it may be difficult for someone else to find. To add back another copy of the unaltered DEM, we can close the symbology and geoprocessing panes on the right to get back to our catalog pane. Here, underneath the geodatabase, we see our three hillshades along with the projected DEM. In ArcGIS software, the geodatabase is akin to the brain as it is where all the crucial data is stored. This includes raster data, feature data sets, and feature classes, which will be discussed in more detail in later videos in this tutorial playlist. Right-click the DEM and click Add to Current Map. Then, drag it beneath the Hillshades group layer. In the next video, I will show you how to create slope and aspect maps from your DEM.